Go. What is up, guys? We're back with another episode of the Coast to Coast podcast. Uh, I'm Carson. My face cam's not working right now, so you guys won't get to see me. It's all right. Forget about it. So, uh, yeah, what's up with you guys? What's up, Liam? And then we got Jose. How you guys yeah, doing? Nothing much. Fam's over here in Miami right now, so having a good time, but ready to talk about some football. Yeah, finally got back to, to Cali, so. Yeah, much, a much needed break from school for sure. I think we all need this Thanksgiving break. All right, right. so we're going to get into it with our first game that we had Thursday night. It's the Seahawks and the Cardinals. The Seahawks got their revenge from a, a few weeks ago and that crushing loss. So, uh, Liam, what do you have to start with with this game? Yeah, so, I mean, unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch this game. I was busy on Thursday uh, hanging out with some homies, but – we saw the Seahawks and Cardinals there with the split the series. But in terms of fantasy production, we saw some good production from the running backs of the Cardinals with Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds. Uh, Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds both uh, with a touchdown in each of four receptions. So Kenyon Drake bringing in 16 and Edmonds with 14.9. Larry Fitz was actually the man for the Cardinals uh, in terms of receiving. He had eight receptions for 62 yards, bringing his total to 14.2. And Metcalf and Lockett were actually both able to play decently well with Metcalf with three for 46 in a TD and uh, Lockett with nine for 67 in a TD. Far from the performance we saw from Lockett uh, when he lit up the Cardinals last time. But uh, Carlos Hyde, though, with a solid performance on the ground with 79 yards rushing, a touchdown, and 17.5 points. What do you got, Jose? Kind of a, a tough loss for Murray on his undefeated MVP campaign so far. Uh, against Russell Wilson, but, um, you know, Hopkins didn't have that great of a game as we saw him have against the Bills, kind of disappointing there. But uh, Carlos Hyde, I think, if uh, Chris Carson, if they continue to hold him out for the playoffs, I think fire up Carlos Hyde, he could have some value for you there. Yeah, definitely. I think um, a lot of it with Murray's kind of struggle, as you could say, not having, you know, as great of a game as he normally does, still put up 20 points. I think that shoulder – it was something that was definitely bothering him. You could tell on the sidelines, but you hope without heal up. And uh, speaking of the Seattle's run game, it was nice to see Wilson uh, with 10 carries because I think, you know, he's such a, you know, a great runner. He, you know, he's great in space. I, I think they should really start using him more in the run game. That His fantasy value will only go up even more. So the next game we have the Browns and the Eagles. The Browns move into seven and three now, which is insane to say. And then Philly just, you know, crawling along, see if they can, win that terrible NFC East division. So, uh, Jose, I'll start with you this time. What do you have to say about this game? I mean, is it just me, or does Carson Wentz look like Nathan Peterman? But, um, <laughs> like, More hype he just hit their, their throwing strategy has evolved to just throw the ball anywhere at this point. Um, but, yeah, Nick Chubb uh, with over 100 yards on the day. Sadly, he didn't get the goal line carry. Um, at, that gave that to Kamara – or not Kamara, Kareem Hunt who only had 11 yards. But uh, Kadero Hodge with 73 receiving yards for the Browns. Um, you know, I feel like the Browns really did not have that good of a game. They just they just rely on this run game so much, and it's so efficient. Um, they were just going up against the Eagles. Run through anyone. Yeah, and, and it's the Eagles. Yeah. Well, no, I guess looking at this about, game. What about you, man? Oh, yeah, looking on the Eagles side of the ball, we got Dallas Goddard and Richard Rodgers. You know, both their tight ends are some solid games. Uh, Dallas Goddard, actually a really good fantasy game for tight end. Five receptions for 77 yards and a touchdown, giving it a total of 18.7. And then uh, Richard Rodgers with two receptions for 48 and a touchdown. But the Browns' defense, though, just to talk about it, they had two interceptions. Um, they had a fumble recovery. They had a safety. They had five sacks, and they had a pick six. So pretty crazy to have 20 points there. But I was watching uh, – some ESPN today talking about how Carson Wentz is virtually immovable. So if he doesn't perform next year, who knows? The Eagles might just want to take the cap hit and get rid of him. But at the same time, throwing Jalen Hurts in this situation isn't going to make him look any better because at the same time, they don't have that good of a talent. Their offensive line's dead. They, I mean, their running back core is solid. You know, Boston Scott's been doing well. Miles Sanders is one of the best yards per carries running backs in the league. So we'll have to see how things turn out. But now Cleveland secures a spot, a second in the AFC North, uh, following a Viking – I mean, a uh, Ravens loss that we'll talk about later. 
Yeah, I still, even though, yeah, the seven and three, I still just don't see the Browns as like a legit contender, but it's going to be fun to see them in the playoffs. It's all, it's interesting. It's always something, uh, someone new with them in their uh, receiving game, but yeah, they keep chugging along. Next game we have uh, an NFC South, a uh, big rivalry game. We have the Saints and the Falcons. They ended up taking uh, a big dub. I'll start with uh, Liam this time. Uh, what do you have to say about this game? Yeah, so Mr. Titan himself, Taysom Hill, uh, he was able to score twice in the ground and uh, played a pretty solid game in, sort of, uh, in terms of quarterback rating uh, for his first start as a, uh, a third, uh, young, I mean, an old 30-year-old. So he had 18 for uh, 23 with 233 yards and 51 rushing yards with two touchdowns, bring his total to 24.42 points. And even though he was a tight end who played quarterback, he still was not able to outscore the tight end uh, monster himself, Kelsey, but a uh, slant God with his first good game of the year, nine receptions for 104 yards. And I think the story of the game though was Kamara uh, zero receptions for Alvin Kamara, who is the Cal. I mean, the Christian McCaffrey running back this year, he had 45 yards and a touchdown. So that touchdown was able to bail him out to bring his total to 10.5 points, but not a good day for Kamara in terms of receptions. So it's be interesting to see uh, if this Taysom Hill uh, style of offense is going to limit Kamara's uh, reception game. So, I mean, I think during the game they had mentioned that uh, Kamara was dealing with some sort of um, injury, just like being banged up from the season. So don't be surprised if they give more workload to Taysom Hill and uh, Latavius Murray. Um, Hill, not a bad start, even as a, as a QB. Um, I don't think you can still start him as a tight end in any format, but he's not mm-hmm. a bad start as a, as a, as a QB. Um, Julio Jones uh, sadly went down with, I think it was a hamstring injury. Um, he won't, he probably won't be playing or it'll be a game time decision. Um, I wouldn't expect too much from him. He only had two catches this game. We saw him sit out the entire third quarter. So kind of sucks. Yeah. I think the big takeaway from this game for me, was just like uh, the Saints defense. I mean, they were just, uh, you know, ridiculous. They were getting all over Matt Ryan. I mean, Matt Ryan's QB uh, QB rating nineteen point three. I mean, sheesh, that's that's tough. Yeah. And they you know they dropped like sixteen points in fantasy. They've been on a roll. Um, and yeah, they're moving eight and two. They're looking uh, looking like definitely one of the top favorites, if not the favorite in the NFC so far. Yeah, so next and Carson. Game, uh, oh, something to point out though. I uh, Trey Hendrickson, their uh, edge rusher, has nine and a half sacks from the season, tied for number one in the league, which is pretty crazy to see. Yeah, huge part of why their defense has been balling lately. So next, we have a battle of the, uh, the top two picks in this recent draft. We got the Bengals and the Washington football team. I'm not going to mess that up again. So I'll start with Jose this time. What do you got for this game? Uh, it sucks to see Joe Burrow go down. Um, you know, it kind of gives me PTSD from when Dak went down. But <laughs> yeah, tough for, it, tough, it hurts the value of the entire offense. I mean, Ryan Finley – He's not that efficient of a QB. Uh, so every everyone in that offense kind of gets hurt. But in this game, Bur- or not Bur- Boyd with, with nine receptions for 85, I think pretty solid. The run game has been pretty lackluster um, on the Cincinnati side of the ball. Washington, however, uh, Antonio Gibson with 16 carries for 94 yards and a touchdown, as well as uh, 10 yards in the air. J.D. McKissick, not as many targets as he had last week. I think he had like 19 targets, but he did still get, get six uh, six carries for 43 yards. So still has value in PPR as well. Yeah, and I think another thing to point out, uh, McLaurin with five receptions for 84 yards. He is uh, number four in the league in receiving yards now. He's made his way up there. It's scary, Terry. Just being, you know, the only threat out there for Washington in the air. I know they have some uh, potential people that could come up there, such as Steven Sims and some other people or working their way up in Washington, but who knows? And then AJ Green was able to uh, secure a touchdown to make his four for 41 yards uh, turn into 14.1 points in fantasy. So yeah, prayers up for Burrow though. I mean, that is a nasty injury with the ACL and the MCL. So uh, hopefully he'll be able to come back uh, at the looks of it. I wouldn't expect for him to be back at the start of week one next season. So we'll see. Yeah, and I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to start, you know, Tyler Boyd, you know, AJ Green, and then uh, T Higgins. I mean, guys, you know, I mean besides Green, you know, Boyd and Higgins have been, you know, amazing this year uh, with Burrow, and you know, it's just gonna be tough to start them. I mean, you know, next week they're getting the Giants, who are a frisky defense, but still 
a team that's exploitable, but then they have the Dolphins coming up. They could do some damage against the Cowboys, but I'm not really sure how much I'm going to trust Finley in, in that spot. So um, next we got the uh, the Panthers and the Lions who uh, shut them out. The Lions can't do anything offensively. They're missing their, uh, their uh, new kind of up-and-coming star running back, DeAndre Swift. I think that hurt them a lot. But um, Jose, what do you have to say about this game? I mean, we see TJ Hawkinson continue to be the target leader with uh, Kenny Galladay out. Um, their run game was pretty shy on the Lions' side of the ball. Obviously, they didn't have Swift. Uh, but the Panthers able to, to get it out even without uh, their QB, Teddy Bridgewater. And we've seen Curtis Samuel kind of become like that, that outside receiver for this team, you know, like that main guy. And DJ Moore kind of become like that, that blanket for, for the QB. Uh, not too many shots to Robbie Anderson anymore, but hopefully McCaffrey can come back and and put on some performances for this team because I, I miss it. Yeah, definitely something to point out. But you know, ex Fell Star uh, himself, PJ Walker, his first win in the uh, season, and uh, something to pay, pay attention to. Uh, the Lions are the second team to be shut out this year, as I looked up, and the other team, uh, no surprise here, the 0 and 10 Jets. Uh, but without Galladay and Swift, this Lions offense is essentially nothing. Like uh, Jose mentioned, TJ Hawkinson did have a solid game for a tight end uh, with 10.8 points. But like you said, DJ Moore with a good game. I mean, he now passes his teammate Robbie Anderson, is now fifth in the league in receiving yards with his 127 yards on the day. And uh, Mike Davis, though, with a solid game for um, fantasy. He has 64 yards and a touchdown rushing and then two receptions for 15 uh, bring his total to 15.9 points. So not the Mike Davis that we were seeing earlier in the season. He's now fallen out of those that top eight. I believe he's fallen out of the top eight that he was when we did our midseason recap. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it goes going forward. Yeah, definitely. It was nice to see Davis, uh, you know, put up a solid 15 points. Next game, uh, another absolute blowout. The Steelers um, against – Jay gluten free and the Jaguars, uh, 27 to three, um, the Steelers off, especially their, you know, their passing offense just keeps rolling and, and they look really good. they look like, uh, a re real legit challenger, uh, to the chiefs who at least put up a fight. Cause I mean, the chiefs will get to them. They're rolling, but, uh, Liam, let's start with you. What, what was your biggest takeaway from, from this game? Yeah. So, I mean, you've got to point out that Deontay Johnson had a massive game for PPR with 12 receptions for 111 yards. Uh, <laughs> It seems Sheesh. to be like he is the number – I mean, that's not even the craziest receiver stat line we've seen this week, so we'll get to that later. I know – we know very much when that was. But, uh, you know, it seems to be he probably is his number one receiver in this offense. I mean, Claypool seems to be the guy that's going to end up getting all the touchdowns. I mean, that's – I mean, he did score his 10th on the year, which puts him in pretty elite company for a um, rookie to have 10 touchdowns in 10 games. Pretty ridiculous there. But uh, James Conner, though, was able to uh, – put up a solid performance with 89 yards on the ground, 6.8 yards per carry. I mean, he had been doing so well in the past, but he finally was able to step it up in the run game against this lackluster Jaguars defense. But um, the Steelers, though, were able to pick off Luton four times. And as a result, uh, Mike Glennon will now be the starter for the Steelers going forward. I mean, if the Steelers for the Jaguars. And uh, James Robinson was the only Jaguar with anything close to production with 11.4, which is – not what we expect to see out of James Robinson game in game out. Yeah, I mean, I think we got to praise the Steelers for their their drafting of wide receivers these past few years. I mean, we're seeing Juju be pushed out of this receiving core, and I think on a lot of other teams, he would definitely be the number one receiver. But it sucks to see them shy away from the run game that was so consistent in the beginning of the year. Um. But yeah, this Jacksonville, this Jacksonville team without without Minshew is pretty much nothing. It's an easy win every week. Yeah, definitely. And like you said about uh, their run game, you know, it's yeah, it's sad to see because James Conner was a guy that, you know, he was very very consistent. You know, maybe not you know an RB one, but was getting you consistent, you know, top tier RB two numbers uh, for a few weeks there. But their run game is basically like non-existent at this point, just because. Like you said, their your their young receivers are killing it. it it's insane uh, to see them hit on so many great draft picks. Next up, uh, crazy OT thriller. We have uh, Tennessee and, and Baltimore. Uh, Derrick Henry with the uh, the game winning touchdown. Okay, wait, real quick. Is that dog super loud in the background? Not really. Oh, we're good. Oh, cool. 
anyway, so yeah, uh, Derrick Henry winning the game for the Titans. They moved to seven and three, and Baltimore six and four. I mean, I I, I feel like I would have predicted them to have like three three losses or less, honestly, coming into this season. They're already six and four. So, uh, Jose, what do you have to say about this game? I mean, Derrick Henry, we've seen him be kind of the owner of the Ravens these past few years. Um, but I, they, were, they were talking shit a lot in this game. Yeah. And it, it was kind of a scrappy game towards the end there. We saw them kind of uh, bump into each other and exchange some words. But uh, J.K. Dobbins out for the next game. Look for Gus Edwards to be lead back of this backfield. And uh, Corey Davis has actually been one of the most consistent receivers, surprisingly. Um, putting up double digits in every single game except one, which he put up zero, and obviously the games he was out because of injury. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've said it all year. This Titans team is pretty fun, and, and I think look out for them in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, Jose, you didn't mention your boy. Des Bryant makes his uh, debut, gets some catches. I mean, he already made his debut, but he actually put oh. in some uh, work out there for the uh, Ravens. But uh, Lamar Jackson with not the greatest game, you know, that's what we've been seeing this year. It seems like people have exposed his ability to not be able to throw the football with a 17 for 29, which is a not very good game. But Mark Andrews, though, you know, finally putting up that uh, those numbers that we are used to seeing him last year, five receptions for 96. And finally. And then uh, A.J. Brown, you know, continues to score. I mean, he seems to always be making his way into the end zone. I don't know how many touchdowns he has in the season, but I know he, he missed some for injury. So if he played the full season, I would have expected him by now to have 10, but four receptions for 62. A touchdown gives him 16.2 in the season. Did you watch the play yeah. of that touchdown? Oh, he drew did the L it? for them. Yeah, I saw that. No, but, like, did you see when he caught it and then, like, they carried him and he just, like, oh, barreled oh, through, like, four talking, guys? I thought you were talking about Derrick Henry. No, uh, yeah. No, AJ, AJ, Brown, AJ Brown. Yeah, one of the craziest catches of the year. Like as Dude, far as he's been, after he's had a, he's had a ton of crazy catches. Like, he's a beast, man. Like, I can't believe, like, him and Metcalf were teammates. Oh yeah, yeah. And, I mean Metcalf was so raw in college. Like no one expected him to be anything near this. Like he was not a good route yeah. runner. All he was, yeah, was just a specimen. So just yeah, just a straight like vert and go. Yeah, and I he mean everyone blessed with with uh, yeah. with Russ. I mean having one of the best quarterbacks in the game. Yeah, I mean everyone overreacts like why he wasn't drafted so high, but like he seriously yeah. wasn't good in college. It's how it is. Yeah, no route like, tree at all. Like everyone ever heard of a combine warrior? Like that they exist. So, oh, exactly. So next game we got the uh, the Texans and the Patriots. Uh, you know, Houston getting a getting a little revenge on the Patriots who you know been kicking their ass for the last few seasons. Um, so yeah, they went twenty seven to twenty. Uh, Liam, what do you got for this game? Yeah, so I saw someone talk about this. Why is Damian Harris only getting eleven carries against this poor rush defense of the Texans? Uh, he was able to have a solid game, though, still with 12.4 points with 43 yards and a touchdown. But Deshaun Watson, I believe, is the story of the game here. Uh, just absolute monster game from the guy himself. Uh, 28 for 37 with 344 yards passing, two touchdowns, 36 yards rushing, and a touchdown, bringing his total to three touchdowns on the game. Uh, Brandon Cooks and uh, Will Fuller both go over 80 yards. And uh, Cam Newton with, I mean, I don't know, he's still he's had a lot of passing yards, which be able to make him have a solid day in the end. But uh, I think two things I got to point out, especially on the Patriots side, uh, Demir Bird with six receptions for 132 yards and touchdown uh, makes it interesting with Jacoby Myers, who we saw uh, was really developing that chemistry with Cam Newton. So uh, it's going to be a toss up if you want to uh, start either of those guys when it comes down to it. But uh, James White seems to be the guy who's going to have his uh, receiving backfield now with Rex Burkhead out uh, for the foreseeable future. So six receptions for 40, 64 yards. Uh, gets his total to 14.3 points on top of his rushing yard. So uh, maybe James White's could be coming back to his old self. So we'll see. Yeah, and it sucks to see Duke, Duke Johnson uh, kind of falling off. You know, we saw him have a good game the day that uh, David Johnson went down. But ever since then, kind of has not been efficient or really been that valuable at all. But uh, for eating Sean Watson, man, can we, can we see him on a different team? Like, can we get him on a contender for once? I'm That's what's so frustrating, but then I want him to go to a team, but then he signs this huge deal with the Texans to stay. Like, why? I know. I it's like the team doesn't either, care, care about him at all. 
I mean, yeah, imagine what could have been with, like, him on the Bears. I mean, they'd never never really had the weapons around him, but be much better than they are right now, that's for sure. Exactly. And I, and I bet you he Crazy. misses Hopkins, that's for sure. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, and to get back David Johnson, I mean, who did okay at the beginning, but no, it's, he's out now. It's D-hop, it, you know. Yeah, he's out now. What what has he really done? Sad. Sad to see. Yeah, hopefully he, like, forces his way out, like, NBA I wonder, style. I wonder who that mm-hmm. second. And Ron is going to turn into. Yeah, I mean, who knows? It could turn into a beast, but I mean, I'd rather just play it safe and have a Ben Hopkins that I know is going to be good to, you know, risk a draft pick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. So next game, next game, the I think the the biggest surprise, um, maybe okay, Cowboys. We'll get to them. That was kind of shocking, but probably the biggest surprise of the week. Broncos, Dolphins pulling off a win against the Dolphins, who've been super hot. Their defense has been uh, amazing under uh, Coach Brian Flores. Um, and, yeah, just a, a wild win I did not see coming. I, I know a lot of betters were probably super upset. So, uh, Liam, uh, what do you have to say about this game? Yeah, so, I mean, big storyline here. Tua Tagovailoa bench during the game, uh, not throwing the ball efficiently. And uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick was not able – to make any Fitz magic appear and uh, bring the Dolphins back. But I think the story of the game, though, was the rushing uh, by the uh, Broncos. Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay both go over 80 yards. Uh, Melvin Gordon was able to get the goal line work with two touchdowns. But still, I mean, combined between the two, they got 166 uh, yards rushing, which is pretty good. And then Tim Patrick, I mean, some guy that I know we on this podcast were uh, very hesitant about was able to have another one of those Tim Patrick games with uh, five receptions for 119 yards. So bringing his total to 16.9. So, I mean, I just want to see Judy used. I love Judy. So uh, we'll see. But, I mean, Mm -hmm. I guess I'm expecting next season with Cortland Sutton healthy. They still got Noah Fant. uh, It should be open up some more opportunities for uh, all these guys out here. So Definitely. Jose? Yeah, I mean – I think the top of this this uh, Dolphins backfield is Salvone Ahmed, however you pronounce it. Um, yeah, even when Gaskin comes back, I think they're not going to rush him to kind of uh, take back the same role he had. I think stick with Salvone Ahmed for now, for at least the next two weeks, because um, Breed is non-existent in this backfield, and neither is Patrick Lair. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's it's just weird to see their quarterback situation, the Dolphins. I mean, you know, you take Fitzpatrick out, who, you know, was playing, you know, pretty solid, at, you know, getting that still, you know, making them competitive. Uh, they take him out midseason, put into it, and then they take him out mid game. Uh, it's all weird. I wish they would just kind of like pick one. I'd rather just see Tua just like, you know, ride it out and learn from like his mistakes because you already committed to him. But, uh, you know, weird situation right there. Next. We have the Chargers and the Jets. The Chargers, I mean, I still thought they were going to find a way to mess this game up and find a way to lose even against the now 0-10 Jets. Uh, but they stuck it out. They got the win. Uh, Herbert with another massive game. Uh, with Burrow out, I think uh, he's, you know, the clear-cut, you know, offensive rookie of the year favorite. Um, so, yeah, Jose, what do you have to say about this game? It sucks to see Herbert going out there, you know, balling like this and still barely winning by six. Against yeah. the 0-10 Jets, I mean, it's kind of like the same thing with Deshaun Watson. This team is just not really – I mean, he has weapons, but his defense is just blowing the game for him all day. Um, Frank Gore on, on, the, on the Jets' side of the ball, I think, is going to be the workhorse for this with um, P. Ryan now on the – I believe he's on the COVID list. But, uh, yeah, Keenan Allen with a monster day, 16 receptions for 145 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> Sheesh. Sheesh. Stupid. Sheesh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Kalen Balaj, I told you guys about him a couple weeks ago. Hold on to him, uh, at least until Eckler comes back. Yeah, I mean, I was not, another thing to point out, uh, Hunter Henry was a pretty solid day. Uh, was able to, I mean, saved by a touchdown, but still four receptions, 48 yards, and a touchdown. And uh, Rashard Perryman with a two for 54 and a touchdown, 13.4. But uh, the story of the game, though, is Keenan Allen. And then Mike Williams, though, was able to put in some production, you know. You never know what you're going to get from Mike Williams. Uh, one day he's the greatest red zone target of all time, and then the next day he doesn't get anything done. So four receptions for 72 and a touchdown gives him 17.2 on the day. But, yeah, Herbert continues the ball. Like, uh, 
it's crazy how well he's doing. So you, he will more than likely win offensive rookie of the year. The only person I could see contending for it is James Robinson at this point. But yeah, pretty mm-hmm. crazy how the um, Jets almost made Burrow. a comeback. Exactly. Yeah, RIP, bro. I love seeing Herbert, uh, you know, target Keenan Allen so much. I mean, you know, top receiver, your rookie – Rookie QB, you know, play it safe and give it to the best guy. Like, give it to your best offensive weapon. And he's been doing that awesome. Like, just, I mean, 16 catches, 145 yards. Oh, my. Crazy, bro. Absolute monster game. We'll get to him when we do team of the week. Next game, uh, Packers and the Colts. I'm actually shocked uh, that Rodgers was not able to pull this off because, I mean, he basically did. Uh, he was working his way down the field, you know, poor uh, Marquez Valdez Scanling, you know, with a tough, uh, you know, fumble loss kind of cost him the game. But, uh, you know, Colts ended up winning this one, 34-31. Uh, Liam, what do you have to say about this game? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, Marcus Valdez-Scaling literally put up his career high, 144 receiving yards the week beforehand, and now he fumbles in overtime, and uh, the man himself, Rodrigo Blankenship, wins it with a field goal. But uh, Jonathan Taylor with a solid game rushing, goal. you know. Fact. Exactly. Jonathan Taylor was actually able to produce something with 90 rushing yards and uh, four receptions for 24 yards. But uh, Michael Pittman Jr., you know, his first really good game as a a rookie. I mean, some guy that he's been injured for the majority of the season, but he was able to bring in three receptions for 66 and a touchdown. But um, Devontae Adams, Jones, and Tanyan, I mean, the top three receiving targets were the reason why the Packers were doing – were keeping this game with the Colts in the first place. Adams with seven for 106 and a touchdown. Jones with 71 scrimmage yards and a touchdown. And uh, Robert Tanyan with five for 44 and a touchdown. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would stay away from this backfield at this point. I think they're just going to keep taking that approach of riding the hot hand. Um, you know, one day it'll be Taylor. Another day it could be Wilkins. And then one day it's going to be Naheem Hines. Um but yeah, Devontae Adams with just a casual seven, seven for a 106 and a touchdown. Kind of just a standard Devontae Adams day. Um, kind of just stupid to see how well how well this team um, or how well this this duo kind of does every week. You know, it's it's just you can just assume that he's gonna do that every week now. Yeah, he's basically like matchup proof. I mean, the Colts have been, you know, great defense uh this year. And yeah, he still can't do anything about Adams and Rodgers. Their chemistry is just off the charts. Uh, so next game, a uh, bit of a shocker to see the Cowboys put up one in the win column. Um, but, you know, it's the Vikings. I mean, they start off one and five. So anything's possible, uh, especially with Kirk at quarterback. So the Cowboys took a, a 31-28 dub. Uh, Jose, I'll start with you since it's your Cowboys. Uh, what stuck out to you the most in this game? I mean, Andy Dolan is not a bad quarterback. But he, I don't Heck think no. he's really that good either. Yeah. Uh, but – it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks because it's like, I, obviously, I want to win. I want to see wins as a Cowboys fan, but I still want that number one pick or at least top three. Um, so I didn't, mm-hmm. I really wasn't that happy with this win. But um, Adam Thielen with a monster day, eight catches for 123 and two touchdowns. But now, sadly, he's out for next week. Um, so look for Justin Jefferson to kind of eat in this next game, who is kind of being that number, you know, like a top three rookie. He was drafted after Ruggs and Judy. But he's definitely outperformed them this season. Uh, CD Lamb, kind of the the number one receiver in this in this offense, I'm not getting the most targets, but I think he's getting you know the looks in the end zone, um, not in the slot like Amari Cooper. Yeah, I mean, hey, my uh, my number one wide receiver in our league, my boy Adam Thielen, Mr. Red Zone himself, uh, secures his 11th touchdown on the season. Uh, Mr. Red Zone with eight receptions for 123 and two touchdowns. But Kirk Cousins with a solid game, actually, uh, 22 for 30 with 314 and three touchdowns. But, uh, yeah, Dalvin Cook with a pedestrian day, 160 scrimmage yards and a touchdown. So uh, we'll be interesting to see, you know, if the Cowboys don't end up winning their uh, division, I would expect them to go offensive line. You know, if they can secure your boy out of Oregon uh, at tackle, Penesu. that'd be wonderful. Yeah, I know. If not – you know, maybe go inside. We'll see what happens. But uh, it doesn't look like the health, the health of Tyron Smith is going to be something that's promised. But uh, hopefully Lael Collins gets back. But, yeah, we'll see with the Cowboys. Because if they do get a good pick, uh, I mean, if they don't go offensive line, 
uh, I would go corner. If they go higher pick, you know, get Sertain, get Sean Wade, uh, get someone to help in that secondary because uh, it's not looking good. Yeah, definitely. And then next game, we have the Chiefs and the Raiders who, uh, you know, I thought the Chiefs uh, were going to blow them out, honestly. Uh, you know, you know, they beat them earlier in the season. Obviously, I'm thinking, you know, that's not going to happen twice. And I think the Chiefs would probably be, you know, pretty upset and just, you know, go full, you know, Mahomes 99 overall on them and just blow them out. But this game was actually pretty close, pretty entertaining game uh, Sunday night. So, uh, Liam, uh, what do you have to say about this game? Yeah, I mean, Kelsey scores the game-winning touchdown. Uh, it was the first game-winning Wide touchdown. Open. Yeah, I know. Wide open. I mean, Andy Reid drew that shit up like a master. But, uh, Perfectly. It, Textbook. Pa- but, you know, Patrick Mahomes through 41 starts is statistically the greatest quarterback of all time. And it was also his first game-winning drive touchdown with two minutes or less in the game. So props to him. I mean, he's usually winning by a lot. So that's how – just how you know great mm-hmm. he is. But – um. Kelsey with a huge game, eight receptions for 127 and a touchdown. Hill with a huge game, 11 receptions for 102 and a touchdown. Clyde Edwards O'Leary scores two touchdowns. Uh, Darren Waller with a good game, seven receptions for 88 and two TDs. And uh, the top two tight ends this year going to get against each other. And my boy Nelson Aguilar, six receptions for 88 yards and two and a, and a touchdown. You know, they're going against, I believe, Atlanta next week. So expect Aguilar, you know, get another touchdown. This boy's been playing super well this season. I'm rooting for him. But, uh, Derek Carr, Derek Carr playing well despite the loss, and uh, Josh Jacobs was able to secure touchdown to save his day from being a, a dud. Yeah, I mean, I think if this is a matchup in the playoffs, um, you know, the Chiefs definitely got to look out. I think the Raiders just kind of have the, the Chiefs figured out in a bit, at least so they can at least put up a fight. I don't know how how they would fare in the playoffs, but I think they would definitely mm-hmm. give them a run for their money if they if they met at some point. Yeah, I feel the same way, actually, just because, like, you know, these are two teams. They know each other, you know, same division. Uh, so, you know, if any if anyone in the playoffs uh, is going to know the Chiefs, uh, it's going to be, you know, the Raiders. They see them, uh, you know, more than any other team that they'll, they'll be facing. And then finally, uh, the Monday night game, uh, really good game, actually. I, I didn't get to watch it, but, you know, watching the highlights and, you know, seeing it go back and forth. Uh, really, gr- really good game against two, you know, contenders in the NFC, two of the – you know, favorites. Uh, Rams ended up taking the dub, twenty-seven to twenty-four over the Bucks. Uh, Jose, what stood out to you in this game? Uh, yeah, Cooper Cup with a big day. I kind of needed him to this week. Eleven for one hundred and forty-five. Um, Robert Woods also with twelve for one hundred and thirty and the touchdown. Out of nowhere, uh, we're seeing yeah. on my bench. <laughs> uh, this yes. team had this team had more receptions, more receptions than rushing yards which is kind of insane. I mean, this this uh, backfield for the L.A. has been inconsistent all year, but Goff with almost 400 yards through the air. Um, Brady just – I don't know. He's kind of fallen off since, since this, these past two weeks. I feel like, you know, we kind of thought him out to be still in his prime, you know, this, like, uh, undefeated LeBron prime. But, um, yeah, we're seeing that he's still human. But uh, Matt Gay with the game winner against his former team, only one uh, after one year with the with the Bucks. Yeah, in your face. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, like you're talking about Jose. I mean, Tom Brady. He he does not seem to be the guy in prime time this year. You know, lost to the Saints. You know, now he lost to the Rams. So losing to b- two big NFC uh, foes. Um, yeah, I mean, twelve point six four points isn't going to cut it for Brady and fancy, but uh. Jared Goff, I mean, Jared Goff did turn the ball over twice as well. But uh, like you're saying, tw- uh, 275 yards combined between Cup and Woods and uh, 23 receptions. That's absolutely ridiculous. But Godwin's Evans and Brown all play well. I know we all saw that Evans touchdown where he was going juice mode on those boys. Crazy. Like what, like four but, uh, dudes on him? Like just oh, bringing yeah, everyone I'm, in. Oh, my. I guarantee he got drug tested. We can say that for a fact. But uh, <laughs> random drug Godwin, test. Godwin was random. seven for fifty-three to touchdown. Evans five for forty-nine to touchdown, and Brown getting a majority of the receptions with eight for uh, fifty-seven. So, yeah. Uh, Jose, that was a great stat that you had about the uh, the Rams. Like more receptions than rushing yards. That is absolutely crazy. Because you know, I feel like 
it's just like the new age of the NFL where it's kind of like with the NBA with the three pointers, you know, because I definitely know like 10, 20 years ago, you know, you had to have uh, that run game. You had to have a backfield. Just, yeah, you had to have that run game. And now to see, you know, yeah, more receptions, that's insane. I think with Brady, like, you know, because he's had his moments this year where he has looked like the guy, but, you know, some terrible picks in this game. I mean, you know, picks that it's like, what were you thinking, you know? And I think with him, if you can pressure him, which obviously the Rams, you know, can do with Donald, they have a great front, uh, you know, front seven. Like, if you can pressure him, it, it's it's going to be tough for, for Brady to win these games, especially in the playoffs. You know, I think, you know, an ideal matchup for him in the playoffs would for sure be, uh, you know, Seattle, just because, you know, their defense is, is nowhere oh, to be seen. But Exactly. But, hey, but I, to yeah. point out, though, the guy that picked off What's Brady up? was the 199th pick in the draft. So the guy picked him off twice, which is pretty crazy. So that little connection there. 20 that's years awesome. apart. Yeah, that's 20 a, years apart from each other, I think. Something like that. That's a that's wild dope. stat. I know. that That's insane. All right. So then finally, we have our team of the week for week 11 at quarterback. We have Deshaun Watson, free Deshaun Watson. He went off with 31 points. Dalvin Cook, who has, you know, been on probably most of these, if not all of these teams of the week, uh, you know, RB1 at 25. Clyde Edward Tiller, it's good to see him, you know, playing like, you know, the running back that I think most of us drafted him to be, like the potential that we thought he had coming in this season. He dropped 20, uh, 20.7 points. Keenan Allen, you know, like we talked about Monster Day, he ended with 34.5 points. Thielen, Mr. Red Zone himself, 32.3 points. Tight end, Kelsey, uh, you know, been tight end one all year, 26.86 points. And then Robert Woods, great to see him just go off, uh, you know, because he's a guy that is – you know, has a low floor or a high floor and then kind of like a low ceiling. Uh, but he just exploded through that with 30, 30 points. Brown's defense went off with 20 points. And then the GOAT himself, Blake and Ship with 14 uh-huh. points, totaling to 235.42 points. Um, anything you guys have to say about this list? Anything stuck out to you? I mean, Kelsey I saw this picture. It was, all the time. Um, yeah, Kelsey um, – I didn't even have to do anything for Kelsey. I just transferred it over from like two weeks ago. <laughs> but um, yeah, I saw a picture. It was like Blankenship next to Metcalf. And I was like, I love football because these two these two players can play the same sport and be. I know. Yeah, that it's was crazy, awesome. Man. I saw it for you too. The goat. But I know. I mean, Blankenship's playing super well. I mean, he barely, I mean, he was in a competition. To, I mean, he was undrafted, made his competition, won the uh, Colts kicking spot. And I mean, now he's, arguably one of the best kickers in the league this season. So it's good to see from him. Yeah, the Colts, their defense and, you know, Blake and Shea, their kicker, you know, they've been the two best fantasy options from that team all year, those two guys. Because if you stack them, because I think they've both been, you know, at least top five the whole season, you know, the kicker oh, and then their defense as well. For sure. You know, those have been like major assets uh, in fantasy this year. And more basically no one else on their team. Oh, more consistent than Taylor. <laughs> everyone, everyone on that team. Just a fantasy nightmare. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for us this week. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And we'll be back with uh, week 12, see how these uh, how these Thanksgiving games go. Uh, it'll be nice hey, to – Might be in person next have... week. Ooh, oh, I'm not coming home. Oh, then what, two weeks? Wait, are you ever coming home then? Yeah, I'll come home in, let's see, probably two. like another three, four weeks. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah, Maybe so we'll, we'll have we'll see for sure end of the season. We'll for sure have an end of the season, like, in person. Right. That'll be crucial. Right. Sounds good. If not, I'll come track you down in SoCal. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, come down south, bro. It's nice there. We got some, right. we got space. Yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah, that's going to do it, guys. Peace.